Okay, so now we're on to communication. Now, when you were a settler in, uh, 200 years ago on Earth, communication meant sending a sailing ship back to the mother country, which might take uh, several years. I'm sure we can do better than that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually depends on when. So, as we talked about earlier, getting there, Earth and Mars are going around the sun at different speeds, therefore we're at different relative positions depending on the time of year. Now, the closest we get is just shy of 56 million kilometers apart. Oh, I'm a bagatelle. <laughs> exactly, that's right, it's nothing. Now, if we can send a message at 300 kilometers per second, the speed of light, it takes 185 seconds. So we divide that by 60 seconds per minute and we get just over three minutes to send a message back to Earth. So you're not going to be having a video chat with your family back on Earth. You can just say something, then wait three minutes when it gets to wait another three minutes when it comes back and then get their reply. This is not real-time communication. You also can't get people on Earth remotely driving some buggy. Just trying to drive a car with a six-minute delay between what you see and what happens on the surface. It's not going to work. So this is one of the big challenges we have right now on Mars. So how are you going to deal with that when you're living there? Well, it gets a little bit more complicated because we can also be really far away when we're on essentially on opposite sides of the sun. When you're exactly on opposite sides, you're not going to get communication at all because the sun's in the way. That's right. Even if the sun's not directly in the way, uh, you don't, your radio telescope looking at the sun is going to get lots of interference. Exactly. In fact, Mars often has what they call sun shutdown periods when they're blind because there's a good three weeks or four weeks when we're opposite sides where you cannot communicate with Mars. So all those rovers, they shut down so they don't accidentally drive off a cliff or something like that. So, you know, and this distance, so it's no, no longer you know, three minutes, is it? No, I mean, we're talking about 400 million kilometers, which we're getting 20 ish minutes. Now, that's starting to actually become a little cumbersome. We're not just talking about waiting six minutes. We're talking about waiting 45 minutes for a back and forth conversation. But that's still a lot better than, for example, sending a sailing ship back to the other end of the world and getting an answer years later. Or, or even old fashioned telegrams that would take this many minutes to send a signal from relay to relay to relay around the world. So this sort of communication is actually, I mean, for the last hundred years or so on Earth, we got used to near instantaneous yes. communication, but all of previous history, this would be nothing. It would be nothing, but it's gonna require changing the way I think we operate in our modern day lives. You know, uh, this is the 70 meter dish at Tibimbilla, which we're gonna go visit. Uh, and it is one of the main things of talking to Mars, of downloading things like Curiosity data or all those rovers. They send all of their photos back. They send their videos. Now that requires actually quite a bit of data. And the 70 meter dish can download and upload at 800 to and a 3000 bits per second. So that's 800 bits of information per second. Not megabits? No, no, gigabits, not, bits. Not, not even kilobits. So that's 40, about 50 to 150 kilobits per minute, or about two, almost three to 10 megabits per hour. So this is essentially transferring a photo that you would take on your mobile phone per hour. And the reason why it's so hard is that you're basically going to have a a dish on Mars, or maybe you send the signal up to a satellite on Mars and then that relays yeah. it on. And that's going to, dish is going to be a particular size. It's not going to be that big. That's right. And any dish is not going to send everything in a very tight beam. That beam is going to spread out as yeah. it travels. And by the time it's traveled the many millions of kilometers to Earth, the initially very tight beam might now be spread over much larger than the surface of the Earth. In fact, it will be. Yes. And so most of the radiation is not going to hit your dish. It's going so to hit you, everywhere. So let's say you're putting out like 10 watts of power, which is a fairly powerful transmitter, then the, the amount of watts that you're going to hit even a 70 meter dish on Earth is yes. going to be in the near nano watts or less. Exactly. So you're picking an incredibly tiny signal, so you need a very large dish to pick up enough of it and very sensitive receivers. And so people are looking at better ways of communication that were explored in other parts of the course, like using lasers. But what it still means, though, is, OK, yeah, we're doing a bit better than our ancestors or, or you know, people who have traveled before us. But our modern day of information and data transfer is not going to be the same. You're not going to be sending videos constantly back and forth. The weather reports you talked about for needing for, say, if there's a solar storms, are we going to have to wait on relays from SOHO, a satellite around the sun, to get to the Earth and then relay it to uh, Mars? Or are we going to have to find either ways of preserving information and data on Mars, i.e. 
data storage, computer systems, networks, or work on in a, a different frame of mind in terms of that uh, not immediate communication world. Yes, yeah, so probably this is fine for sending text messages or look outside or storm. That's probably that's, that's yeah. you, you can probably do it with one bit. <laughs> yeah, that, you probably could. Yes. So that, that's not going to be very hard. But you're video conferencing and downloading your data and uh, watching Netflix and forget it. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to have your uh, normal comforts, let's say, of living on Mars unless everything is just fully built on Mars, which as we've talked about before, it's probably not going to happen that quickly. I mean, if you built a dish this big on Mars, then you'd get a much higher data rate. It might be taking only a few seconds to send a photograph. But a dish that big is a lot of iron working. I imagine it would be built eventually, but uh, it's not going to be something you can get in the first colonies. That's right. And you're also not going to be reliant on just one per hundred or a thousand people with everyone wanting to send their information. Just think about how many satellites or mobile phone towers we have around the Earth. So communication is really about transferring that data and information. and while, yes, we could probably get around it, it is going to require a different way of living than what we have here on Earth.